We're going to talk about the daily disciplines in every single one of these you already done. You did it while you were dating, okay? And this is why you fell in love. And we get lazy in these things, and it's why we fall out of love. So let's go through these. Passion, we're going to spell passion. P, pursue me every day. It's not a once a month thing or a once a year thing. Pursue me every day. And what that means is come into my world. Come out of your world and come into my world. And my world is my needs. Come into my world. Talk to your wife. Sit down with your wife and come into her world and talk about feelings and talk about the kids and talk about what she's going through and meet her emotional needs and help her physically. I mean, serve her, help her physically. Come into the world. Come into your husband's world. Tell him what a great man he is. Be affectionate with him. Be sexual with him. Is be his buddy. That's, that's your husband's world. Every day pursue me. That's how you fell in love. You've already done it. You came into each other's world. You were sensitive, and you met each other's needs. A, ask me if I'm happy, and let me tell you the truth without having to pay a price. I'm trying to please Karen. Now, when I was a selfish idiot early in our marriage, I didn't want to hear if she was happy or not. I didn't want the answer. It, just, it would put a burden on me to have to meet her needs. Regularly, I'll ask Karen, and she'll ask me, are you okay? You okay? And what I'm asking her is, is there anything I can do? Because why? Because my number one goal in life is to love Jesus, and my second is to love Karen. I want to be a good disciple of Jesus, and I want to be a good husband to Karen. I'm not threatened by what she has to say. I want her to tell me how I can improve as a husband because I want to make my wife happy. And she's never asked me to do anything that was unreasonable. Are you happy? Listen. If I won't ask the question, there's something wrong. But if I'm afraid of the answer, there's something wrong. Ask me if I'm happy. Listen, you did that a hundred times when you dated. You happy? Everything okay? Do you like that movie? Do you like that food? Am I driving okay? Remember the last time you asked that question? Am I, <laughs> am I driving okay? Do you like my new cologne? Am I smelling good for you? Everything, everything that you did. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? And you get married. Don't tell me. Don't answer that question. There's something wrong with that. Okay. S. Say what you like about me a lot. I need it every day. Praise is a discipline. It is a discipline. When you praise, you're reminding yourself of what is right. When you praise God, praising God is such an important discipline because it reminds us of how great he is. If I stop praising God, I just forget the benefits of God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget none of his benefits. Is what Psalm, Psalm 103 says. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Don't forget his benefits. When I'm praising God, I'm just reminding he's powerful. <clears throat> he's a healer. He's a provider. He's all those things to me. When I stop praising, I forget. When I'm praising Karen and I'm telling her, I appreciate you so much. You're such a good mother. You're such a good grandmother. You know, you blah, blah, blah. You're, you do this. You do this. You're this. I'm just reminding myself of all the reasons I'm in love with her. But when praise disappears, criticism always appears. There's no vacuum. You either have praise in your family or criticism in your family. You say, well, Jimmy, I do need to say something critical. You have to earn it. For every 10 things you say positive, you can say maybe one thing critical in the right way with the right attitude. But if all you have is a critical tone in your relationship, it'll kill the relationship. You, you didn't fall in love saying, uh, this is Dave and I'd like to go out and could you change the way you comb your hair? I don't like your hair comb. And, and could you wear something a little bit more flattering? Because I've seen you at school. And, and do you have any better clothes than that? And, and, and they're going, loser, you know. You don't fall in love criticizing each other, and you don't stay in love criticizing each other. Next S, say please and thank you and use good manners. Remember how mannerly you were when you were dating? You're naturally well-mannered. But here's, this is the truth. Most couples treat strangers better than they treat their spouse. We show more manners and consideration for people that we don't know or don't know very well than we do our own spouse. And so here's the question, why do you practice good manners? And here's the answer, to preserve relationships. Manners preserve relationships and manners show consideration for others. Manners say, I care about you. A lack of manners just says, I care less about you. Okay. Manners preserve relationships. When Karen and I first got married, I had terrible manners around, I didn't have any manners around Karen. I have good manners around Karen. I'm mannerly with her. And she's mannerly with me. And we know each other. We've been married, you know, for a long time. But I'm saying we haven't forgotten our good manners and it preserves our relationship. And let me give you some examples of manners. Please and thank you. And it means I'm not taking you for granted. Karen, would you please do this? 
thank you. He just says, I'm not taking you for granted. Being complimenting, being helpful, uh, helping a person. You, you, you do that naturally when you're being mannerly and when you're with other people, when you're other with family, you're helpful, you're complimentary. Communicating in advance if you're going to be late or something in your life affects your spouse and doing it with patience and kindness. Those are just the manners that you use when you're dating that make, your, that make the relationship safe and they show consideration. And so we get rude. We get disrespectful. We get crude sometimes in marriage and the, the relationship deteriorates. And the way that it makes me feel is you don't care anything about me. You care about all your buddies and all your friends. You care about total strangers, but you don't care about me anymore. Lack of manners relates a lack of consideration and the relationship begins to decline. I, I need for you to study and learn what I like and dislike. Romance means self-initiated pursuit. And if I have to keep telling you, it means you're not paying attention and you don't care. I want you to pursue me without me constantly having to tell you. And if I have to keep telling you, that's, you're, not, you're checked out. Romance simply means you're on my heart. I'm thinking about you. You're the main thing in my life and I'm studying you and preemptively I'm going to do things that you like because I want to please you. That's what you do when you date. That's why you fell in love. You were always thinking what will please them and you would do it and they would just say, you're my soulmate, you're the most wonderful person on earth. And then we get married and we stop doing it. Oh, only put God before me. Never let anything else come before our relationship. Not work, not friends, nothing. Not church, nothing. Except for God, nothing else comes before our relationship. Keep everything else in its place. In, never reject me or turn away from our relationship because you're hurt or offended. Stay connected and committed and fight for our marriage. I was a terrible husband for se several years in our marriage. I was a terrible husband. Karen was a young wife, emotionally stranded in a bad marriage with an idiot. And we went on, God healed our marriage, and we went on a radio program one day, and we were being interviewed. And this was Dennis Rainey's radio program, has a wonderful marriage ministry. And Dennis Rainey was interviewing uh, Karen and me, and he said, well, Karen, this is, I'd, never, I'd never heard Karen answer this question. And he said, well, Karen, Jimmy says he was an idiot. And early in your marriage, and Karen said, yes, he was an idiot. And she started pretending she was me and kind of mocking the way I talked like she did earlier. And so, no, she didn't. But the, uh, he said, uh, in that time, were you tempted to have an affair? And I had never, I had never heard Karen ask that question. And I thought, well, I think I want to hear the answer to that. And Karen, this is Karen's answer to that question. I wouldn't let my heart go there. I wouldn't let my heart go there. And she was telling the truth. Because I controlled my heart. And what Karen said was, in the difficult time in our marriage, I didn't check out. I checked in. She fought for our relationship. She prayed. She pursued me. And she redeemed our relationship. But she just as easily could have checked out. God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's covenant language that God speaks to us. And here's what we say to each other. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'll never check out. And when you hurt my feelings, when you don't meet my needs, when we're going through hard times, I'm not going to turn away. I'm going to fight for our relationship. Thank you for joining us. Experience the life-changing series, Lifelong Love Affair, on CD or DVD. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Marriage Today's latest book, Lifelong Love Affair, is an essential tool couples can turn to again and again for inspiration and strength. Order your copy today. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.